Now let's get started. How to study your Bible. Now, we've been uh, ministering on this particular topic, and I told you that, um, and, I, and I actually preached the message, is God in control? Right? And then it brings the question now, well, if God is in control, because this is what sinners are going to say. They're going to say to you, if God is in control of everything, then why did that guy kill all those people in Las Vegas? Wouldn't your God stop that? Because, see, we've been teaching it wrong. We've been saying that God is in control. God is not in control. The, Satan is the God of this world. And it's now time for the church to learn their authority and their place in the earth. We have the power to change this. We have the power to change it. Listen to what I'm saying. There's the most powerful entity on earth is the church of the living God. We have the power to change it, guys. We just got to rise up, take our place, know who we are in Christ, know what we have in Christ, and know what we can do in Christ. And that's the whole purpose of this, this study here is because in order for you to know who you are, what you have, and what you can do in Christ, you got to know how to study God's word because God is sovereign. But he only operates within the confines and the laws outlined in his word. He's not going to go outside of his word for you. He's not going to go outside of his word for me. It is up to us to study the mechanisms and the power, how to get the power of God to manifest in the earth. It's up to us to study. And you have to be able to not only just know the word, but how to get this to operate here in everyday life. How do we get this to change my finances? How do I get this to change my marriage? How do I get this to grow my church? How do I get this to move me in the destiny that God has me to do? And that's the, that's the dilemma. That's the missing piece. That's what's been going on. That's the missing piece. That's why people have been failing and experiencing so many different failures in life because we don't know how to properly divide the word of truth. So your text, your background text for this is 2 Timothy I thought I wrote it down. Anyway, it's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Very interesting text. It says simply, uh, let me read it to you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Listen, it says, study to show thyself approved or yourself approved to God a worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, that's powerful because if you can rightly divide the word of truth, if he's telling you, now the New King James Version says be diligent. Some King James just says be, be, uh, be, uh, be, uh, be uh, focused. I think the Message Bible says be focused. But the whole purpose of this particular text in Scripture is telling you to study the Word of God so that you can rightly divide the Word of Truth. The very nature that he told you that you can rightly divide the Word of Truth is saying that there's a possibility that if you don't study, then you can wrongly divide the Word of Truth. And then it also says in the second Timothy chapter three, we read over, it says, be, be leery of these babblings and these false teachings, because if you don't study God's word and know his word for yourself, you can't take what Reverend says. You can't take what mama and them say. Mama and them could have been wrong. Reverend them could have been wrong. You have to know the word of God for yourself. And so I told you last week, there's four things that you're going to need to study the word of God. Number one, you're going to need a teacher. And I told you that the greatest teacher, when God, when you became a Christian and you stepped into the, out of darkness into this marvelous light, God gave you the very best teacher, which is the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of you. Now, once I finished that message on last week, my brother told me, he said, what you need to do, he said, now you need to go back and show people how, how to actually Take them through a lesson, and we're going to do that when we get to a technique. I'm going to show you the technique on how, I'm going to show you how to go through the scripture, how to go through it. So God gave you the best teacher. He gave you the best teacher, which is the Holy Spirit, living down on the inside of you. So you need to learn, you need to learn how to commune with the Holy Spirit. And he gave you the teacher to show you how to uh, interpret scripture. You should never read the scripture 
without praying to God and asking him to reveal the scriptures to you. That's why people can't understand the Bible, because the Bible is a supernatural book. It's supernatural. It's not a natural book. So you cannot understand it with the natural mind. That's why you need the Spirit of God on the inside of you to open up scriptures. It's not anything creepy. It's not... Uh, uh, we got a lesson coming and a couple of these talking about the Holy Spirit. It's not, it, it, it going to knock you down on the floor. The Holy Spirit is not that. We made the Holy Spirit something that is not. We made the Holy Spirit something that is so uh, uh, untangible. And the Holy Spirit is touchable. It's tangible. It's on the inside of you. We've made the Holy Spirit something that is not. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, showing you how to divide the Scripture, showing you, it's teaching you what the Word of God is meant to say. And you should never read the Holy Spirit without asking the Holy Spirit before you read the Scriptures to reveal to you. We're talking about in your study time. So Holy Spirit, help me to understand the Bible. It's not, it's not creepy prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you No. Is a simple conversation because the Holy Spirit is a person that lives inside of you. So it's a person. And so you talk to that person and you say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand the Bible. Help me, Holy Spirit, to understand what you are saying in this particular text. If you have a daily devotion that you go through, before you go through your daily devotion, you need to commune and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And you will be amazed as you're reading the scripture, how he'll unravel the scriptures for you. And then when you finish reading the scriptures, you go again and you say, Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for opening up the Bible to me so that I can understand it. And then you meditate on what you read. And when you do that, he'll begin to unravel more and more revelation to you. So you need a teacher. And God gave you the best teacher. The best teacher on this earth is the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. The second thing you need is you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some tools. Now, I wrote this down because the background text is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The reason he told you to rightly divide the word of truth because there's a possibility that you can wrongly teach the word of God. You can wrongly teach it. So he wants you to rightly teach it. And so in order to rightly teach the word, you need some tools. You need some tools. So two common mistakes that people make when they are studying the Bible, I wish I could type this on the screen, two common mistakes that people make when they're reading the Bible is they take something out of context and translation. They take something out of context. Pastor George, what do you mean? I teach English. And, you know, uh, I teach English uh, to English second language students. And one of the things that I teach them is this thing called context clues. When you're reading something, to understand what a particular word meant, you need to understand the context, the environment in which the word was said. So a lot of times we'll take something and we'll read it and you'll say, mm, okay, okay. Uh, and if it's not put in the right context, it'll throw the entire revelation off. So you need to make sure that you understand context. Let me give you an example. My wife, I think she's the most beautiful woman on world in the world. I do. She's the most beautiful woman to me. And so I see her, and uh, she's getting we, we're getting dressed, and we're walking down the street, and I say to her, "Man, baby, you looking bad today." Okay. I want you to understand the context. We're getting ready for this beautiful dinner. We got, she's dressed up. She's looking nice. And she's walking down the street, and I look at her from the backside, and I said, man, baby, you looking bad today, okay? In the context of how I said bad means she actually looks beautiful. She actually looks good. She looks like a brick house. She looks amazing. She looks wonderful. That's the context in which I said that, okay? Now, somebody walking by heard me say that. And because they don't understand the context, they don't ask the context, they will say, 
I can't believe he said this was bad. How could he say that? That's what happens a lot of times in the word of God. What happens a lot of times in God's word is we take something and we totally take it out of context. And when it comes to the true revelation of what God is trying to say to his people, you can't understand it because you don't take time to understand the context. So that's what tools are for. The tools are help are that to help you understand the context in which something is said. The second thing you have tools for is to help you understand translation. Okay, The Bible, the Old Testament was written in... Aramaic and Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. So when you're reading something in the New Testament, you don't need to be trying to get a Hebrew translation or an American translation. You need to go to the original context in what you were saying and understand the translation. So you have tools in place to help you understand, number one, context, and number two, translation. Because the Bible was translated from Hebrew, some Aramaic, to now what we read in English, New Testament from Greek, now into English. So you need different things to help you understand the context. So I'm going to give you eight things that you need. Now, you don't have to go out and buy all this stuff at once. It, took, it, it, it takes time to build a good library. It takes time to build a good library to, 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 to digest work. But what I'm going to do is when I first started pastoring, I'm going to share with you what a pastor, I this pastor lies. His name is Pastor Gant up in uh, Tallahassee, Alabama. He pulled me aside. He had been pastoring a lot of years, a number of years. And he pulled me aside. Okay. And he pulled me aside and he told me, he said, hey, man, if when you're teaching the Bible, these are the most important things that you need. And he showed me some of the things I need. And I'm going to share them with you, with you today. Number one, you need a good Bible. Okay. Now, here's what me and my wife, we teach. Get your Bible you can understand. There's nothing sacred about the King James Version. A lot of people say, get you a good King James Version Bible. We don't even talk like that anymore. We don't say thou and thus and this and there and the. We don't even talk like that. Hither there unto and verily I say unto you. We don't even talk like that anymore. Okay? So get you a good Bible, you understand. Now, I happen to like the new King James Version. That's that's. I love that Bible. It's just something that I preach from. I study from, I happen just to like this version. My wife, on the other hand, she likes the New Living Translation. Whenever she gets up and ministers, whenever she goes out and preach, she uses the New Living Translation. That's the translation that she uses. Now, what we recommend is, I recommend getting a parallel translation. I believe you should get one in King James Version and you also should get, so they're parallel translations. So one of the best things that Pastor Gant told me was to do, he said, go get your parallel translation Bible. And so I got one Bible that had the New King James Version and then it had the New Living Translation and then it had the Message Bible. The name of that Bible is called the Word Bible. The Word Bible. I mean, it has over 15 different translations in the particular Bible. Now, here's the thing. I was going through this today and I was talking to my brother. I said, man, you know, to be honest with you, a lot of this stuff now is right here on your iPad. I mean, you can go to your iPad right now and you can pull up hundreds of different translations. Okay. So you need a good Bible or get download your good Bible app, good Bible app. The Bible app we use here when I'm teaching is, um, It's called Uversion. Uversion. Download that app, man. Listen, let me. Let me I know I got to hurry, but uh, you can you can zoom to the scriptures. Look, it's it got different. All these different. It's got fifty, ver, fifty English versions of the Bible. Fifty English versions. Well, they're translating the Bible from Hebrew to English and from Greek to English, from Aramaic to English. Fifty different trend. Oh my God. Man, if they'd have had this when I first started pastoring, oh my goodness. Okay, so you need your good Bible. You need your good Bible. The second thing you need is you need your good Bible dictionary, okay? A good Bible dictionary, okay? What I use, I use Smith's 
Bible dictionary. So you need your good Bible dictionary, okay? So if you get your good Bible dictionary, I love this one. Not only do you need a good Bible dictionary, you also need you a Webster's dictionary, okay? Because you want to understand what different words mean in the Bible. What does it mean when he said this? So get you a good Bible dictionary, okay? The third thing I would buy is a concordance, okay? This is the third thing I would buy. Starting out, I would get me a good Bible, preferably parallel translations with different translations. So one translation is going to be in King James Version. One translation is going to be in New Living Translation. Another translation is going to be, it's parallel. And so it outlines the verse. So it'll take the verse, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It'll say that in the King James Version. It'll give you that in the Amplified Version. It'll give you that in the New Living Translation. There's nothing sacred about the King James Version. Get you something that you can understand. So the first thing you do, get you a good King James Version Bible. Second thing I will buy is a good Bible dictionary or download the app. A good Bible dictionary app. Smith's Bible Dictionary. And man, I tell you, with the way things are now and how the internet is now, you could really actually, whew, I mean, you could really, really actually just look up some of this stuff um, here. So get this gear here. Then the third thing I would buy, guys, is I would get this. I would get me a concordance. What is a concordance? A concordance is the Bible. It, it takes every word in the Bible, every word, and it gives you scriptures for every word. So just say if you want to talk about abundance okay you want to talk about abundance when you look up abundance it'll give you everywhere the word abundance is mentioned in the bible if you want to talk about love you look up love it'll give you everywhere in the bible where the word love is mentioned every scripture every scripture in the bible every scripture in the bible where, where love is mentioned you want to talk about faith it's in here Every word in the Bible. This is this this right here is a jewel. This is a jewel. So make sure you get you one of these. This is a jewel, okay? Those three things that get you started, okay? That's something to get you started. Good Bible, good Bible dictionary, a Webster's dictionary, and a good Strong's concordance. That'll get you started, okay? Now, if you want to take your game to the next level, okay? This is for my leaders. If you want to take it to the next level. The next thing I would buy would be this, a keyword study Bible. Whew. Now, this is powerful, okay? A keyword study Bible. What this Bible does is it takes certain words in a particular text, and you can go to the back of this book here, and it'll tell you the original Hebrew and Greek definition of that word. That way, when you come back and put it back in the right context and in the right translation, it'll give you a deeper meaning of what God is actually saying in the word of God. Wow. Whew. I will get this. I will get this. I will get me a good key word study Bible because it'll show you how, I mean, everything. I mean, uh. I pray thee, and then you took look at the word pray here. You can go to the Hebrew and the Greek and look at the original definition of what that word means. Guys, this is this is powerful here. Okay. Now, if you want to go to the next level, okay. I know I want one more time. Twenty-two minutes. Okay. All right. I got to hurry. Okay. Okay. All right. So. You got those things. You got your you got your you got your good Bible. You got your good Bible dictionary. You got your concordance. Take your game to the next level. Get your good keyword study Bible. This is powerful. Get your good keyword study Bible. Then you want to get your, I want to say this to last. Well, I got two more things I want to share. But this right here is a commentary. Uh, my dear friend bought me this when I first got ordained as a minister, Orlando Robinson. He bought me this. Now, you want to be careful with commentaries because a commentary is a comment, okay? And so you want to be careful with that. And I really wish I had time to show you on why you need to be careful with that. I do a study called The Black Presence in the Bible. 
Some commentaries, man, they butcher certain scriptures up to teach black people that they are inferior. Okay? So you want to make sure that you get you a real good commentary. Okay? And you only want to use a commentary as needed. You don't read a commentary like you read the Bible. Okay? You read the Bible. Okay? And then a commentary is just there to amplify. And it sort of kind of sometimes put things into context on why certain things were said, why it was said that way, and that's it, okay? And we'll start, I'll start uh, next week, I mean, I'll start Thursday with some different things that I use also to amplify the study, but that's, 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 if you want to get started today, today, go out and get you a good Bible, get you a good Bible dictionary, or a regular dictionary, and a regular dictionary, get you a good concordance, and get you, I mean, this is probably the best investment I made, a keyword study Bible. This is probably the best investment. I mean, it's a little expensive, but it's probably the best investment that I made, okay? And then we'll go through on, because uh, I want to talk about Drake's, how to use this. This this was another good investment I made. I'm going to talk to you about this, and then I'm going to talk to you about different books and different things. So we're going to talk about a technique on Thursday.